Up next, we've got Jurassic World Dominion 2022, starring uh, Star-Lord and Bryce Dallas Howard, and directed by Colin Trevorrow. I think that's how you say it. By the way, he was one of the writers on Rise of Skywalker. Now, I was never into the original Jurassic Park. I mean, it's fine, and I have nothing against it. I would definitely say it was a good movie. I don't have any complaints. And, you know, it's hard to go wrong with a classic by Steven Spielberg and John Williams. But from what I hear, someone really messed up this whole Jurassic franchise, especially with the latest movie. It's gotten a lot of bad reviews, and after watching it, I can kind of understand why. Okay, so this seems to be a movie about a group of humans who have faster reflexes and are able to outrun clumsy reptilian predators. I, d I didn't uh, catch the name of those reptilian predators. I think they were called like uh, apocalyptoraptors or something like that. All I know is they are like miniature T-Rexes that have poor reflexes. And it seems like all of these movies have that, like another version of the little baby T-Rexes with poor reflexes. Man, that rhymes. Anyway, their reflexes are so poor that the humans can simply like jump out of the way and the apocalyptoraptors will slam into a wall like wily, wily coyote <laughs> and they'll like bonk their head and act confused for a moment. Also, in this movie, there are a lot of characters and boy, it makes it complicated and hard to follow, hard to focus and not in a good way. I might like my music to be complicated, but maybe not my movies. You know, in a movie, I only need a few people to watch, like three or five. You know, three to five characters, that's enough for me. But every scene with this movie, they started in another story thread. They brought back a bunch of original cast members playing their original parts. And my wife notices things like this, like they were wearing their original clothing from the old movies, which I guess was, I don't know, a coincidence? Like, what are the odds of that? But then again, I always dress the same. In like 20 years, it's likely I'll probably be still wearing this shirt here. Or at least one that looks exactly like it. But here's the real problem I had with this movie. Part of the way through, Star-Lord gets on a motorcycle. And I, I actually think it was like a dirt bike. And anytime I see a character get on a motorcycle, I let out like a, ugh. Because... I know I'm in for like 15 to 20 minutes of stupid motorcycle stuff. So Star-Lord takes off riding the dirt bike at a high speed down a narrow alleyway, right? And there's this series of shots where he's spending a long time looking behind him at the Apocalyptoraptors chasing him. Like way too many shots in a row where he is not looking where he's going. Anyone who has driven through an alley knows... How many obstacles there really are? There's like dumpsters and people loading things and stacks of boxes. And there's probably even cars parked there or coming at you from the opposite direction. But there he is speeding along in an alley, not looking where he's going at all, you know, like for dramatic effect. He's traveling at like, I don't know, 50 miles an hour or something. Has anyone listening ever ridden a dirt bike? Because I have not. I noticed throughout this movie, no matter what, whether he's running or riding a dirt bike or driving a car, I don't remember if he drives a car. I'm going to guess he drove a car. Uh, he's always going just the right speed so that the apocalyptoraptors are snapping at him, but can't, but just can't get him. It's like one of those mechanical rabbits on a dog racing track. So with the whole dirt bike thing, here's the other problem. The apocalyptoraptors can keep up with his dirt bike and it's going what I assume is like 70 or 80 miles an hour. So he's hauling ass trying to get on a plane that's taking off a plane. And seriously, the plane's wheels are already off the ground. And all the while he's got apocalyptoraptors are snapping at his heels and trying to get him. And at the last moment, he's able to somehow speed up more and he drives up the ramp into the back of the plane. And guess what? One of the apocalyptoraptors is able to jump in after him. So here's a question. How fast do planes go when they're taking off? How fast would you think they go? Hundreds of miles per hour? For that type of plane, it seems like it's maybe 120 miles per hour. 
according to Google. And I think dirt bikes can go maybe 85 or 90 at the most. I would expect that at their top speed, a dirt bike would be maybe too hard to control. Like you would start getting wobbles or something, especially while being chased by killer dinosaurs. Adding to all this, I don't know what sort of wind difficulties you'd experience speeding on a dirt bike uh, behind a plane that's taking off. Isn't there some sort of like pressure or lift or like whirlwind issue happening behind planes? I, I'm guessing. But for me, the biggest implausibility problem here is this. How can an apocalyptoraptor run on two legs at like 120 miles an hour? That's like twice as fast as a cheetah who has the benefit of aerodynamics and crazy physiology and four legs. So that's just silly. There's no way a two-legged dinosaur can catch a plane taking off. Anyway, this movie was so captivating, I got distracted about halfway through and started brushing my cats. There's this uh, thing called a Furminator, and... Um, our cats love it. You ever used one of those on a cat or a dog? You know, I can't tell who enjoys it more, me or them. And this is not an ad, by the way, although I wish it were, because I could definitely endorse the Furminator. My point is, since I got distracted, I don't know how the movie ends. I'm assuming it wraps up with the humans just barely outrunning clumsy reptilian predators or maybe Star-Lord jumps out of the way and all the dinosaurs just run off a cliff. Or actually, didn't that happen in the last movie? Or am I just, uh, am I imagining that? I don't remember what movie that was. So I got to give this one two out of five stars. It was bad, but not awful bad. And on Letterboxd, I've only given two movies. Uh, anything less than two stars. I, I looked in my history there. One of them was Brightburn, which got one star. And I gave Disney's Cruella a half of a star for some reason. I'll probably need to uh, reevaluate that because I can't imagine it being so bad that it would get half of a star. 